The Lake District National Park is an adventure enthusiast paradise. At 884 square miles, it not only houses the highest mountain in England, but over 150 high peaks, 16 lakes and countless tarns. As the largest of England's national parks, it is visited by over 16.4 million people each year, who come to experience its breathtaking views and stunning landscapes. For backpackers, the thought of a linear path that passes right through this iconic region is enough to set the heart pounding. So when the Cumbria Way was devised in the 1970s, it quickly became one of the most popular long distance paths in the country. From Ulverston in the south to Carlisle in the north, it's said to offer 75 miles of low level easy walking. The perfect introduction to backpacking for newcomers. Now, my mum and I are experienced backpackers, but that doesn't mean we always hit the trail hard. We wanted to walk the Cumbria Way as an excuse to return to the country we love, and boy, did we savour every minute of it. So why not join us on our journey along this incredible trail, right through the heart of the Lake District National Park. How's it going? <laughs> you ain't got no food. The whole of the day has been very uncomfortable. The bit to the tarn house and beyond looks a bit complicated. The sun is really trying to come out. Just follows along there. The contour. There it is, the official beginning of the Cumbria Way. Somewhere around here there's a plaque. This sculpture marks the start of the Cumbria Way, long distance route from Ulverston to Carlisle. It represents a compass with a cairn at the centre. The cairn contains rocks representative, representative of the geology along the route. The route is shown on the side of the cairn together with Ordnance Survey map references on key points along the route. This sculpture was made and installed by sculpture Chris Bramble. Bramble in February 2000. Oh, 15 years old. Oh, doesn't look it. Cool. This is also the official start of the Cumbria Way. <laughs> Why is it covered, covered in mesh? Oh, it's so cool. And off we go. That's comes to town. Oh. Okay, let's just pause here and rewind a little bit. To get to this spot, we left our home in Somerset and drove for seven hours to get to Olverston, which is where we are here. It's now half past three and we have eight miles of supposedly easy, non-complex walking ahead of us to our first campsite. Okay, now that that's cleared up, let's go! Following the little beck on our left, we swiftly left Olverston and met our first Cumbria Way sign. From here, we crossed a stone footbridge and then headed uphill. There's a very strong smell of garlic along here. Like garlicky garlic. Ooh. First time of the day. It's really humid. So we've just begun and we've reached a little gate and it's designed so backpacks can't fit through it. That was where our dislike of kissing gates began. Each and every one meant taking off our packs and squeezing through. And then it started raining. So, we've been on the trail for what, half an hour? We've already decided to change the route. The only trouble with the roads is to get run over by cars. So, 
the actual route goes up there, where we just saw a few deer. Uh, but we've decided we could make up some good time because there's a track for this road that literally follows on for like four miles. Time passes much faster when in good company. We discussed the route over and over, detailing what we were most looking forward to. We're going past the Langdales, we're going down Langstrath, which is one of my favourite valleys. We can walk over Cat Bells or along the shore of Derwent, whichever takes our fancy on the day. We're going into Keswick, the best place in the world. We're going over the back of Skiddor, which is awesome. Quiet, really quiet. Nobody knows about it. Don't tell anyone. And then stroll, stroll, stroll. It's Carlisle. Yeah. <laughs> At this point, the cloudy skies meant we weren't able to see Olverston behind us, but the views ahead of rolling hills and pastoral land were a welcome change from the car dashboard. Before long, we rejoined the official route and marched our way across numerous fields until we reached St John's Church, a Grade II listed building from 1873. Hmm. Our guidebook promised that at this point our views to the north would be dominated by the old man of Coniston, though apparently not today. Still, we were in good spirit. <laughs> Come back! <sighs> It was around Bruton Beck and Lowick Common that our first slip-up happened. We lost the official path. Okay, so if you wonder why we tend to choose to follow roads instead of going through fields, it's because we get lost, because things never stay the same as the map. So we thought, okay, we'll follow this bit through the field. It cuts off the corner of the road, and in the space of five minutes, we've got lost because the walls have been knocked down, Put path signs removed and There's new walls no built. So we're reversing and going back onto the road. So that's added on another half an hour. It is now nearly quarter to seven. Yeah. Yay. I've had, had, had added on ages. So to the road we go. With both time and weather pressing against us, for the first and last time we sought the help of our borrowed GPS. Okay, there's a farm. It helped. A lot. Yeah? Well, it's supposed to be a farm, but I don't know whether it's the right one. Birch bank. So for the last hour we've been trying to find our campsite. Um, again, through a mass of fields. So we've had to get the GPS out to help us figure out where we are and where we're headed. 261. 874. Yeah, Inquiries. Okay. Birchbank. Yeah. Nicholson. Let's get our tents up before that hits. Because yeah. it's threatening. <laughs> so. That's the end of day one. So today we drove up from Somerset, uh, leaving at about half seven, eight. Uh, we got here or to Olverston at three, reached the plaque and the official beginning of the Cumbria Way at half past three. And we made it here. So we're at Birch Barn campsite, something like that, um, at about half past seven, quarter to eight. <laughs> um, so I think the field bits uh, take up a lot of time. They really slow you down, especially in this weather, um, just because you're concentrating on how damp you are <laughs> and not necessarily the map so well. Um, we have two maps. We have OS photocopies and we have the Harvey map. Um, OS is definitely more detailed, but the Harvey's got... Um, well, the Harvey's the Harvey. It's fine. <laughs> um, so anyway, we're all pitched up now. We've had tea, so we had couscous stuff. Um, and we're just about to head off to bed, so it is, what time is it? Where's my watch? Oh, okay, hang on, it's bed. Ooh. It's nearly half past nine. Um, 
So it's a nice little campsite here, got a toilet and stuff. And uh, so we're going to head off to sleep now, I'll probably be up about half six and then leave for half seven, eight ish. Um, so tomorrow we have a long day. We're going to try and make it uh, past obviously constant water and head over to Old Dungeon Gill because uh, there's a National Trust campsite there. So we'll just take it steady. It's about 19 miles, 19 to 20 miles. Um, hopefully it'll rain itself out tonight. Um, don't mind if it rains in the night. Let's just try and keep the dry walls from moving. But uh, yeah, so far it's been really nice. It's just so good to be back in the Lake District. Um, it's my favourite place on earth ever. Other than Iceland, I really like Iceland. Um, but yeah, anyway. <laughs> so I guess we'll see you in the morning. Sleep well. So there you have it, all packed up and on we go. So today we're walking to uh, Old Dungeon Gill and it's 8 o'clock in the morning. So we're thinking probably 10 hours walking. Um, We've got a few passes to go over, but not many. So, we're on our way. There's your bath, Mum. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're back on the trail now. So we've just walked from, walked from Birchbank, and now we're back here, and we're joining the trail, and we're going to carry on up there just as it starts to rain. Literally an hour into our second day, our next route finding failure occurred. At Tottlebank, we missed a path that should have led uphill on our right, so ended up following another path, now overgrown with bracken, and wandering around on a compass bearing for miles, until we found the official trail again. Soon though, we began the uphill climb to Beacon Tarn, a serene spot tucked away amongst the hills and bracken. After the heavy rain, the western side of the tarn was a bog hopper's heaven, but a backpacker's nightmare. It was insanely boggy. Maybe we should have jumped over there. Because this is just too, you can't jump there. It's too big. Having made it through that notorious wet patch, we enjoyed the trail as it winded its way down stable Harvey Moss and onto an amiable gill that would lead us to the shores of Coniston Water. Finally, much to our delight, we reached Coniston Water and practically twitched with pleasure, having escaped the neck-high bracken and boggy tracks. We're walking on to Coniston, then from Coniston it's on to Town House, and then from there we'll just keep going uh, through as many settlements as we can to uh, Old Dungeon Deal, where there is a pub. The three miles along the shore were everything we had hoped they would be. Easy going, obvious, and of course, beautiful. So this is Coniston launch, and we're now about to head inland to Coniston itself. Reaching the mountains now. So now that we're in Coniston, we can kind of review how far we've done, or come. So this is where we camped last night and we walked, uh, where did we walk? Somewhere around here, enjoying the path anyway. And then we walked up there, all the way along here where we joined Coniston, then all the way along Coniston Lake or Coniston Water to even more Coniston itself. That's quite a long way. Um, and I'll just get the other map and show you how far we have to go, which is like another 12 miles. Okay so on the Harvey map here's Coniston so we've got to walk all the way along here another three miles to Town House then from Town House we're gonna walk join the A road uh, do some crazy thing around High Park Coppice then what we're gonna do instead of going to Scareworth Bridge we're gonna cut off about a mile and a half and join this road here 
uh, to chapel style and then just walk as fast as we can along here to Old Dudgeon Gill Hotel. But as I said, that's still another good 10 miles to go, um, 10, 11 miles. The bit to Tarn House and beyond looks a bit complicated, um, but I guess we'll just take it as it comes and see how it goes. But when just popping into a spa, we thought, we were really surprised at how tired we feel. So it's, it's half past one, um, we started at eight, and we're starting to feel it, which is ridiculous. But I think it's because we've probably added on a good three miles just from being lost. been very foggy and the rain has been on and off all day but yeah. <laughs> walking along the shore of Coniston was lovely because I've never done that before and walking over to Coniston was really nice as well very remote couldn't see anybody at all for miles and miles so recommend it hoping to make up some lost time we followed a B road out of Coniston and then a wooded track up to Tarn House. It was a good choice, as the trail was magical. So we finally made it to Tarn House at 20 to 3 in the afternoon. And it's just over the brow of this hill. Tarn House, a place of many of my childhood memories, is a picturesque tarn managed by the National Trust. Now a triple SI, it attracts over 500,000 visitors each year. Leaving the town behind, we began the long trek to Old Dungeon Gear. So we've left Tarn House behind and are now meandering our way through this patchy woodland until we hit the A Road, which we then cross over and meander our way through some more woodland. How are you feeling, Mum? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get the one. We'll the get there. It's a long day. The long day and the long way. Yeah. That's crazy. Just get a blast of cold air. Yeah. Wow. Very cool. So how do we get to the other side? Is that good? Huh? Wait, let me show you. Heading towards Alter Water and Chapel Style, we met the River Brathe, which winds its way down through the valley. We have We've got about three and a quarter miles to go and then we have made it to Old Dungeon Gill. So we're between uh, Old Water and Chapel Style now. We'll reach Chapel Style and then <clears throat> we just uh, plain sail down the middle of the valley until we get there. Um, but we're getting there which is really great. So hopefully we'll make it between half six and seven. All going to plan. The path has changed, there's new signs everywhere, taking us up to here. Burlington Stone Quarry. Check out this behind me. -na -na -na. It's a pretty big quarry, eh? Big hole in the ground. It goes on around the corner. Wow. So anyway, three miles to go. They've finally emerged from the clouds. Wow. Ticking off the miles as we trudged along the valley was a satisfying feeling. And despite our aching feet, we couldn't help but feel an awe of the stunning panorama. We made it. We were staying in the National Trust campsite. Um, yeah, it's a nice little campsite. Actually, Mum and I are going to go treat ourselves to a shower because we're each carrying towels! Yay! Because uh, we really stink before we're expected to do. Um, so, the plan is... Where's my watch gone? What time is it? It is... Just gone seven. Uh, tents up, get showered, and head off to the pub for a meal and then come back here and crash. We'll start all over again tomorrow. Yay! So he started off flying on that mountain and hovering above it and then he did a circle 
and then went over there and there's another plane that's been hovering around here another helicopter even same thing <laughs> look, I'm tired, okay look, why are you going that way? it's this way Dungeon Gill is one of the most rural stops on the Cumbria Way. Here, the scenery is everything. Heading out from the cluster of slate buildings, we began the walk along Mickledon Valley to the base of Stake Pass. This is a much loved route by day walkers, fell runners and backpackers alike. It's easy to see why. A trail of sheer beauty, framed by peaks such as Bowfell and Pika Stickle. So this is the split, so we're going to be going up here to Stake Pass. The hardest thing about the climb wasn't so much the gradient, but having to watch your footing when all you wanted to do was look at the breathtaking views behind you. All too soon the view was left behind, and we found ourselves in the surreal remains of a glacial landscape the ground randomly undulating where sediment had built up over time, leaving moraines and the occasional erratic. Here we go, it's the top of Stake Pass. In no time at all, the route sharply descended downwards towards Langstraff Valley. Now, our guidebook described it as bleak and stony, but for us it was awe-inspiring, even comical, with the way the path zigzagged like we had never seen before. So far today has been absolutely awesome. Good. And beautiful <laughs> and heavenly and you just want to savour every single moment because it's so stunning. And we've been very lucky with the weather up until now. Stuff to rain. <laughs> it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we going now? Going down to Rosswaite, which is in Borrowdale. Again the jewel of the Lake District. And then we're walking along the River Derwent to Derwent Water. See. So, a more beautiful walks. Yay! We've done most of the climbing for today. Just a gentle stroll now, of 10 miles. Shall I wear my flip flops? <laughs> <laughs> 10 miles. Yeah. <laughs> the walk along the valley was such a highlight, with Langstraff Beck animating the scene. W. H. Cooper described it as the wildest, rockiest and most colourful, interesting mountain stream in England. Mum and I were inclined to agree. We followed the stony track for three miles until we reached the beginning of Burrowdale at Gallanley Force. Here we met the familiar Coast to Coast path, a trail we walked together in 2013 and would thoroughly recommend. Waving to Stonethwaite and then passing through Rosswaite, we walked as if on a mission alongside the River Derwent and then on to Grange. The route took us through the dense woodland of Low Howe Woods, just below Castle Crags, and then opened up to reveal blue skies and the incredible Catbell Ridge. Yeah, we can. Go on, Catbells. <laughs> Oh, 
made it to Derwood Water. <laughs> and the sun's come out and the sky is blue. And I'm back in my normal hat. A three miles long, one mile wide and 22 metres deep, Derwent Water is noted to be one of the most principal bodies of water in the Lake District, boasting majestic mountain views and tranquil wooded footpaths. When walking along the shore, keep an eye out on the western side for the striking wooden hands carved to mark the 100th anniversary of the National Trust in 1995. At this point, late in the day, we walked with something quite naughty in mind. We were going to catch the launch, which frequently crosses the lake, to Keswick. We met it at Hall's End Jetty, cutting off three miles of the route, but it was worth it. Relaxing on the boat, soaking up the views, was the perfect way to recover and refresh, even if it did last only 20 minutes. So we're now in Keswick. Um, we took the boat ride. I've got two good pieces of news for you. The first is that now that my tent's up, I've got my non-waterproof back on. Yay! The second is the tent's up and this is the view. Wow, is that not incredible? <laughs> that makes every step worth it. <laughs> That's amazing. Today, the views have been absolutely stunning. Um, and right now, this is no exception. Anyway, move that up. So, get cleaned up and then we'll find a pub and go grab some food. Oh, my feet stink. I'm going to show you something very gross, okay? Check this out. Yum, yum. <laughs> I'm sorry, but backpackers, just like runners, do not have pretty feet. Oof. That's a beautiful place, huh? How's it going? <laughs> you ain't got no food. What's this look? <laughs> Don't go in Mum's tent. Yeah, good sight here. Oh, duck. I love ducks. <laughs> Wake everybody up. <laughs> oh, best duck ever. <laughs> what? Pies. Look, I can't get pies. Paintings. Good morning and welcome to day four of the Cumbria Way. Yay! Uh, today we well we've just what we've just gone through Keswick uh, and longingly eyed everything for sale on the market and had to force ourselves away. Uh, I bought an egg sandwich to satisfy my cravings for egg sandwich. Um, and now we're making our way over to Skiddor and then we're gonna head over to Skiddor House and then from there see what the weather's doing and see whether to take the high route or the low route. Um, so the high route is 9 miles and the low route is 12 from Skiddle House. From Skiddle House. Um, but it depends. I mean obviously the high route is hillier anyway so mountainous here. Uh, but we'll see. So Skiddle is looming above us now. We're just going to make our way up to the main car park and from there around to Skiddle House. And so the ascending begins. The sun is really trying to come out, but uh, it's still pretty cloudy over there from where we've come from. <laughs> no! <laughs> Slow down, car! 
He doesn't know. You don't know what you're gonna meet. No, no idea. No. Uh, uh, uh. Now he knows. He's like, oh dear. <laughs> oh my word. Oh. Ow. Ow. Oh, they're lucky. That was a good face. Stand there in shock. <laughs> Whoa. What I love about the Lake District is it's just so so close and 3D with sort of all the rise and falls and I know every single mountain top, the name of them all, that's Scale Fell just opposite and Blencathra leads on behind that. And we're going into an unknown which is the Bacca Skidor, which I've only walked to Skidor House before, I haven't walked any further than that so this will be really interesting to be able to walk that bit further into the back of Skiddle, which it's generally very quiet because it's difficult to reach apart from by foot. I really like this view. <laughs> I really like this route. Skiddaw is 931 metres high and is the sixth highest peak in England. The route to Skiddaw House winds its way along the eastern side of the mountain, along a broad track, making for easy walking. Skiddaw House itself was once a shooting lodge, but is now a youth hostel, owned by the YHA. Unsure about the weather, we opted to take the route around the western side of High Pike and the Cowbeck Fells, rather than over the top. So we just put our waterproofs on because it was really cold and windy and it's about to rain and the clouds are coming in and now it's like sunny again. <laughs> One minute it's like, oh it's so cold, so cold, so cold. And now it's like, oh it's too oh, hot. It's too hot. <laughs> Welcome to the next district. Yeah. <laughs> Changes from one minute. All the time. If you don't yeah. like it, you wait five minutes. It is quite cloudy though. Yeah. Let's but go. it's blue sky, look, look. Sky. Oh, it's sky. <laughs> We're going off over the track. track. Don't worry, there is a bridge. <laughs> you could show me how to practice your river crossing. If you want to get wet, go on there. No, you can do it. I don't want to get wet. I don't want to get wet. You only cross the river if it's absolutely necessary. But you could show me how to cross no. it. No. Demonstrate. Come on, we used to go. We've got 12 miles to do. 11. 11 and, Eleven and a half. And a half. <laughs> 11 and a half to get. Wait, no, because we're cutting no, off. Uh, no, 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 we've got to go to the other side of Calvary. Okay, 11 and three quarters. And you said it wasn't, you said it was half a kilometre. Ish. You liar. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot a campsite. Right, let's go, Ice, it's sunny. Oh. Look, we go down quite quickly actually, there's a gate just down there. Yeah. Oh! Can I see the sea? Yeah. Wow. wow. That's cool. Oh, you can see the mountains on the other side. Scotland. You can see Scotland! Wow! That is cool. Oh, that's incredible. They're really clear. Well, not really, but their silhouette's really clear. Wow. Oh, wow. That's why we came this way. That's why we came this way. Wow. That is so gorgeous. Brilliant. So, if you're worried about taking the alternative route, uh, when it comes to from Skidor House, don't worry because that view is absolutely stunning. Um, we've just gone past that waterfall, which is called. Uh, what's it called? Do you know what it's called? Oh, I folded the page, and we'll never know. But either way, it's a very amazing waterfall, and this view is absolutely amazing right the way across to Scotland. I mean yeah, granted it might not be sunny when you do it, 
but even so it's beautiful and the river meanders uh, just down there at the bottom of the valley and the wall starts and stops where the river meanders are it's really funny um, but absolutely beautiful view it's really inspiring and the path just follows along there the contour of that mountain there all the way around and to top it all off there's blueberries yay or bilberries i suppose is what they're called when they're wild yay mm, yum, yum. Oh, leaving dash falls and skiddle behind we've prepared ourselves for 10 miles of road walking sometimes things become more of a mental challenge than a physical one uh, guys. <laughs> In the Lake District, you're never far away from the water. <laughs> so true. We're still walking on the road. Uh, we've been walking on it for quite a few miles now and we've got quite a few left. Um, it's very picturesque, it's very nice. Kind of rolling hills of Cumbria. Uh, the weather's really cleared up as I'm sure you can see. Very blue skies. Well, as blue as they get here in the Lake District. But yeah, it's nice. I mean, the road is painful on our feet, uh, as is to be expected. Um, my mum might change into her walking sandals just to be a bit more comfortable. I can't really wear flip flops though. So, um, we've just passed through a little place called Lothwaite. Um, we're now walking around Thwaite, which is a, a kind of hill, um, and then we'll walk, just keep on going kind of east um, until we join the actual Cumbria Way again, and then we'll head north um, down on into Cardbeck. So let's carry on through the rolling hills. There's the sign. <laughs> it says Calvec on it. Is it? Yeah. When we pass that sign, we are officially in Calvec. Okay. Yeah, I just forgot what else to do. <laughs> Crash on the other side. Hey, Mum. Hello. We made it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get a photo, actually. Yeah. yeah. We made it. <laughs> Well, not at the end yet, but that was a long day today. Long day today. And the pub is like half a mile away, so yeah. we have to walk right the way back and then back here again. Um, so that's another mile. Yay! But uh, tents are all up now, so we're just going to relax for a little bit before we head down to the pub again. We made it. It's raining. And the tractor is doing its thing. Tomorrow we go from Cowbeck all the way along the river Cowdew. Up, 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 up. Or north even. Um, and literally just follow the river. So we get to Dalston. Dalston or Dalston or however you say it. And uh, then we continue to follow the river Cowdew. And along the railway, all the way in to Carlisle, just as the rain gets heavy. But tomorrow morning looks a bit vague um, through the fields out of Cowdbeck, but hopefully once we get to the river it should just be quite plain sailing. And you know, if necessary, there's quite a lot of small roads near the river, so we could just follow those minor roads that should be quite obvious but the red dots mean that the path is not clear or there is no path so it's going to be interesting but uh, i'm sure i'll be fine if it's not too boggy of course so the plan is to try and head to uh, carlisle for well as early as we can and then sorry uh, once we get there to 
either catch a bus back to Keswick or if that doesn't work we'll have to catch a train back to Ulverston and then from there we'll drive back up to Keswick because we'd like to spend an afternoon in Keswick before we head home. But uh, tomorrow we leave the National Park, obviously we're way over halfway, we leave the National Park and uh, we head to Carlisle, so good stuff but first of all sleep, good night. Good morning and welcome to the final day of the Cumbria Way. Today we're walking to Carlisle, so it's about 15 and a half miles. Uh, we've had a bit of a late start today because it poured down last night and our tents absolutely soaked. So we made a bit of an effort to dry them out uh, with toilet roll. But we're on the road again now, so we're just walking back to Colbeck and then we're going to head back up to the uh, actual route itself. Um, all the way along the river to Carlisle as I showed you last night. Just as a side note, the pub in Cowbeck is amazing and you really must visit it. Anyway, back to the trail. From Cowbeck, the route dissolves into a mushy path that follows the river Cowd Beck. There's an abundance of wild rhubarb and flowering plants. Keep an eye out for herons. We saw two, though I didn't manage to film any of them. So they're building a bridge, but we get to go over the roots. <laughs> it's got to be a reason why they're building a bridge there. Without our giant packs, the route would have proved a relaxing stroll, but we were finding it incomparable to the previous day's walking and was slowed by high crops and those pesky kissing gates. So we're out Buckerbank now, uh, so just south of Dalston. And then from Dalston we've got about five miles into Carlisle, um, following the old railway, or following the railway. Um, and then that's it, we're at the end, so we've technically got about six miles left. Um, my back's really playing up, I've got a long-term injury there on my shoulder blade. Um, so the last, the whole of the day <laughs> has been very uncomfortable. Um, and obviously mum's feet are killing her. Uh, but otherwise, you know, we're in good shape. It's about half past two now, so we're going to be very, very tight for time uh, to get our train from Carlisle back to Ulverston. Um, so we're just going to have to hobble as fast as we can, really, and take it as we go. But we're just uh, popping to the loo at this pub, which is Bridge End, uh, which is very nice very nice indeed but of course we haven't got time to go there um, so that's in Buckerbank and yeah so just six miles to go now we're just going to hobble that as quickly as we can um, and get back get into Carlisle in time for our train but today has been I mean it's been fine I mean we're from Somerset so obviously we're used to fields and fields and more fields um, there's been a lot of like kissing gates that we haven't been able to get through uh, with our big backpacks and that's been quite frustrating because it's one after another after another and it really slows you down and you have to take everything off in order to get through and then put everything back on again um, so if you're doing this with a big backpack do watch out for those kissing gates because they are a pain um, the rest of the route today has been it's just been fields really full of sheep full of cows the rivers the river has been absolutely beautiful um, but we haven't been able to see it the whole time um, but when you have it has been very nice uh, so now yeah, just a quick break and then head on as quickly as we can into Carlisle and uh, take it as it comes, really. But, uh, you know, at least the weather's nice today. It's warm <laughs> and not raining. So, yeah, just keep on walking. At Dalston, we again did something arguably very naughty, but certainly not without reason. Every local we had passed that day told us not to walk the last stretch, as it was, quote, industrial and not very nice. Since we were already pushed for time, we caught the bus into Carlisle. It turned out to be a great idea, but cost £10 for the two of us, by far one of the most expensive four-mile bus trips we had ever taken. So we're on English Street, which is where it's supposed to end in the city centre of Carlisle, but there isn't anything here. 
So that's our next job. There's a statue over there, but I don't think that's anything to do with us. The white one. Okay, this is now our end because apparently the guidebook says there is no official end. So this is now our end of the Cumbria Way. In the middle of Carlisle. We also went to the War Memorial to give the trail a second finish. Where are we? We're in Carlisle. What are we doing? Centre of Cumbria Way. No, it's not the end of the Cumbria Way. What are we We're doing? We're our cup of tea because we haven't had one all the way since Sunday, actually. Yeah. yeah. Tea deprived. Tea deprived. Not good for English people. <laughs> Poor, aching feet. But we did it. Woohoo! Woohoo! Except we're disappointed because there is no clear end. So we're just going to have a cup of tea and celebrate. What we've decided, this is what we would recommend on the Cumbria Way. Walk to Caldbeck via the alternative route and then walk back to Keswick on the over the top route. So uh -huh. Finish at Keswick, so do a loop round. So there is a perfect, beautiful two routes there and you can't choose. E either route are equally good, but they're far superior to the route from Caldbeck. Carlisle. Which was very boring. Right there. Just get your feet. Just yeah. Go back to Kenwick. And then there. Beautiful place to finish. Yeah. It's official. Just in time, we caught the train back to Olverston and our car. We finished the walk with mixed feelings. Proud of our achievement, but gutted to be leaving the latest route behind. We know one thing's for sure, though. We'll be back.